thank you, Jesus, that when we praise him, we overcome. Amen. This morning, the, the song, a chorus popped into my mind. Now is the time to take the kingdom. Amen. Rise up, you strong, in Christ's command. For in his power and dominion will possess the land. Like we, we praise the Lord out of faith of what he has done for us yes, like already and the promise of his, his coming. That we'll see him, we'll see him one day. But then these middle, these middle valleys of the present, we can thank him for the present, but sometimes in the present we have to thank him by faith based upon what he's done and what he's promised to bring us through. But the truth of God's word, when in Joshua he says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Amen. You are strong. You are persevering saints. You are. And he's, God's calling us to be strong. Praise him with our, with our weak voices, with our current situations. We lift him up. And he's exalted. He's exalted in the in the tragedy, as Brother Cephas shared, or in the in the highlight. We rejoice with one another through victories, and we bear with one another through struggle. Amen. Amen. I love to tell the story. Page two ninety seven. Two ninety seven.
the next song. I would like to have Jack, uh, Joe Hatfield come forward, you know, maybe I'll see that, to give the Gideon work in Rhode Island and all over the world. I know Gideon's is one of my most favorite ministers. Years ago, I still remember when I was in India, I was the youngest Gideon. Can you believe that? I was the youngest Gideon. And they always ca had me carry all the Bibles, 50 years, 50 more years. College after college, since I was teaching in college, it was easy for me to get into all the colleges. In one year, we distributed 50,000 New Testaments. 50,000 New Testaments. Those were my glorious days, Joel. So each time I hear the Gideon's message and what they are doing, it excites me to the maximum. There is no other ministry like that. Clean ministry, clean ministry too. There is no corruption. Point one cent, they are accountable. And uh, Jane Children Home is exactly based on that idea. Not one cent is wasted. Everything is given for God's work. Blessed be the name. Thank you, Joe, for uh, coming here and uh, honoring with your presence here. Come on over and take your time. He said, I'll take only 10 minutes. I said, take all the minutes for Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, my friend. Good morning. Good morning. It's great. Where else would you rather be than in the house of the Lord, right? Right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> um, I'm coming today. Uh, to give glory to God. Amen. I'm coming today to, um, to uh, just to tell you the powerful, how powerful the Word of God re really is. <clears throat> um, I got it. I got my sign. This is what uh, Stephanus uh, was yelling when, when he returned home. You see, he was in a fisher boat in the Siberian waters. And uh, he was been asking someone, he asked me, God, hey, if you are real, if you are true, tell me who you are. Give me a sign so I can, uh, so I can find you and, and I can leave and I can, uh, and I can believe in you. A few months later, a Bible dropped out of the sky. Uh, and he, he rode over and picked it up, and it was a Gideon New Testament. Praise the Lord. Now, so he went, he went back home, and he explained to his, uh, to his, uh, his little village here, yeah, I received my sign, I received my sign. I received the Bible, Jesus is the Lord. Amen. See, he did not know, he did not know, but overhead, there was a helicopter that was throwing things out. On, on on the way someplace else and one of the things they dropped out was a Gideon Bible that was wrapped up in in a, in a plastic somebody some Gideon uh, snuck it in his bag and put it in in the in the hel he helicopter and when they were dropping things off they threw out this uh, this uh, book this uh, that wasn't worth and anything and that was the Bible that Stephanus all picked up. And then and in so many couple of weeks, 39 people of his tribe, uh, of, of his village, accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. You know, uh, <laughs> this is so that you can understand the amazing power of God's word. Every page, every, every word on that page has, is, is a powerful. The Bible bleeds the blood of Christ. It screams about the message of Calvary. It, uh, it cries about the, the about the people who need to, who need who who, uh, who need to hear the the word of God. You know, uh, there's there's a passage in Isaiah fifty uh, in Isaiah uh, fifty five and it likens the it likens the. Uh, the weather to God's word. It says in, 50, in Isaiah 55, 10, it says, uh, for, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, it does not return there. Uh, 
uh, but it waters the earth so that uh, it may bring forth fruit and bud so, uh, so that uh, so to give bread to give a seed to the grower sower and bread to the eater mm -hmm. then he goes on to say so shall my word be mm -hmm. that, that that goes forth from my mouth that will not return to me void but it will prosper in the, in the thing it will prosper in the thing uh, where I sent it and uh, and uh, and it'll it'll prosper and where uh, and it'll prosper uh, what I please. It's Isaiah fifty five eleven. You know you might say, who are these Gideons? I think you all know who the, who the Gideons are. They're a bunch of professional uh, men and women whose sole function is to proclaim, distribute, and, and to proclaim the message of God. That's the only. That's our. That's our sole. So that's our sole pur pur purpose in life. And, it, um, and uh, our ministry, you know, okay, uh, in the distribution of God's word, we distribute God's word in, uh, in uh, two, over 220 cu countries uh, and uh, in over in, in 110 lang 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 languages. You know, uh, Last year we passed out ninety thousand Bibles throughout throughout the uh, throughout the world. <clears throat> um, that means that every time you breathe, uh, uh, three testaments are being uh, pa pa uh, pa passed out. Okay. You know, um, Phil Harris tricked into a hotel one uh, one 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 evening. He was a disturbed young man. He was intent. That um, his life was 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 uh, was wasting away, and he was going to be a long. He was going to be another one of, of a long list of uh, of and, and his family of people who had uh, who had a mental illness. Some of whom was ha had taken their own life. So as he as he was about to uh, jump out the window, he noticed on the uh, on the barrel a blue Guinean Bible. Actually, it was a uh, it was a blue, but it happened to be a red, a red one. But um, so we stopped for a minute, and uh, he started reading it. He finally came to John uh, ten ten, where the Bible says, "I came to, to give you life yes. and to have it more abundantly." It's one of my favorite verses in the, in the Bible. And he kept on reading, and in the moments to follow, in the struggle between man and his God. And, and the uh, and the war between between the angel of darkness and the angel of light, uh, uh, he, uh, Phil Harris accepted Jesus as his Lord and and Savior, and he he was so touched by the by uh, by the Bible that he wrote his own personal testimony in that Bible, put it down, um, and uh, his life was changed. Uh, he had troubles, but he had hope Amen. because he because he uh, uh, because he accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Yeah. Fast forward about twenty years late, late, later, Jim Harris, another another uh, another who was the son of Phil, another a troubled youth, decided he was going to take his own life. Checked into a home hotel. Uh, was about to jump. Saw the Bible on the uh, on the barrel. Opened it up. Didn't read it. What he read was a testimony oh of a man who was about to take his life and was saved from reading the Bible. Same Bible. Same room. Same hotel, father and son. Um, such is the power of God. What's amazing is that the, is that the Gideons changed the hotel Bibles every six years. For some reason or other, it, it, didn't, it didn't happen and, and, that, and that hotel is, is amazing. Such is the power of, a, of, a, of a God's word. Amen. Seek the Lord while, while he may be found. 
when I hear him call upon him when when he was when he was near. Yeah. Maria, I told you not to I told you not to uh, read that fable, that book of fate that book of fables. I keep telling you this here. Such was uh, such was uh, Maria's uh, um, Maria's uh, uh, what he what she heard from his father, who was a mining engineer in Colombia uh, and South so, South South America. Her father took that Bible out of his hand, put it in his pocket, and he says, "I don't want you to read that storybook anymore. It is not true." The next day, as the, as the father went to work. He didn't realize that was going to be the last time he saw his daughter. He was a mining engineer. And at about noontime, that whistle, that dreaded whistle ring, that the, where, where you had a collapse in, in, in the mine. And 600 feet down, you had 36 miners uh, that, uh, that, that were entrapped in, in that mine. It took the mine, it took the, the team five days uh, to reach those miners. None survived. And as they were picking out, as, as they were bringing up uh, the Bible, I mean, the, uh, the, the, uh, the men, when they, when they picked up his father, brought his fathers out, out of his pocket was that New Testament that he put in the day before from his daughter. <clears throat> and in that, in that, uh, and in that, in, in that Bible, he wrote a note to his daughter. And the note said something along these lines. Maria, what I told you yesterday was not true. Uh -huh. uh, the book is not, the Bible is not, is not a fairy book. It is not a book of fables. It is a word of God and, and it is true. You need to read it, accept it, and to believe in it. And he signed his name along with the other 35 uh, Along with the other thir thirty-five uh, names of uh, the men that that were down there on on each page, such is the power of God. You know, um, the the Gideons are not only it's it's a worldwide organization, but it's a it's a local organization as well. We do work around around the greater Pro Pro uh, Providence area. Um, let me tell you a few instances that uh, happened to me personally. I was distributing Bibles down in Johnson and Wales and, uh, and a beautiful young lady, she happened to be black. Uh, 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 I, I saw, her, uh, saw her in my path. Off her, would you like to have a copy of, of God's Word? It's, it's free, but if you read it, it'll change your life. She said, no thank you when she walked by. Uh, out of the corner of my eye, a couple of minutes, uh, a couple of moments later, she came back, and uh, she came back and asked me. She said, "Sir, why are you doing this?" I said, "Well, I'm doing this because Jesus loves you." He says, "Well, why are you doing this?" Well, I told her, "I says, oh, ma'am, not only does Jesus love you, I love you, and I want you to, and I want you to make sure that you hear the eternal word of God." So I took, I, I, uh, I, uh, I uh, gave her the Bible. She accepted it. I said, "See," uh, and after explaining her the uh, uh, what uh, the uh, the plan of salvation, I said, "Would you like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior?" Um, she says, "No, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet, but I'm certainly going to think about it." I said, "Well, what's your name?" And I'm going to pray for you. She, her name was Samantha. So we prayed there. And I and when she left, I said, Samantha, I'm gonna pray for you for the rest of my life. And I still pray for Samantha uh, a number of year, year, years ago. You know, um, I, was out to, uh, I was out distributing Bibles at New England Tech. This happens to be, uh, it was in, in, the, in the afternoon. Um, and I forgot the name of the street. Uh, but um, it was toward the end of the afternoon and the, suddenly the police came. Uh, New England Tech is very hostile to the Gideons. Uh, they don't like uh, people passing out uh, by Bibles there. So the police came and asked me and asked us to leave. It was somewhat to about 3, 3.30. 
And so uh, not wanting a confrontation, we said, okay, we'll leave. And we, we kind of took our time and uh, to, we were almost ready to leave. And a woman came up to me and uh, she said, I asked her if she wanted to have a New Testament. I says, New Testament? I says, this New Testament saved my life. It changed my life completely. Would you like to have it? She said, you know the reason why you're here? I says, and this is what she asked me. I says, yep, I, I'm here by trying to deceive you and proclaim the message of salvation. She says, sir, I'll tell you why you're here. You were here because uh, the Lord wanted, wanted you here. I was on my way to commit su su suicide. And uh, by, by you talking to me for a few minutes to give me the, the, this Bible, uh, I've, I've changed my mind. And I'm, and I'm going to accept what, I'm going to accept uh, what, what, what is in my life and, and the belief. And, she, and uh, she, she, she walked away. You know, the power of God's word. It's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we've got to give God the glory. Yes. So in a Bible distribution, just, uh, just yesterday, uh, Friday, we're at the Mount Pleasant, uh, Mount Pleasant High, 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 High School. I met uh, six, six uh, youngsters there, and uh, <clears throat> he asked me, what are you doing? I said, I'm passing out Bibles. She says, what's a Bible? What's a Bible? Never mind the plan of salvation. They didn't even know what, what, what a Bible was. Uh, and and uh, they, they all took it. Uh, yesterday, uh, I mean, Friday when we passed out those, those Bibles, we, we had probably a 95% acceptance rate. Uh, most of them uh, took, 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 took the Bibles. We were at, a, we were at another school. And it was a hostile environment. Um, and um, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the students were, were pretty well accepted at uh, receiving God's word. And, uh, but the administration uh, was, was not. They asked us to leave. We said, no, we, we really can't leave. We're really, really on public, uh, public property. And they were, uh, they were uh, to put it mildly, incensed. A couple of minutes later, the police came. And uh, my, my buddy and I, uh, we were passing out. There was uh, several of us. What are you doing? I said, well, we're passing out the word of God. How are you doing that? And so we showed him. He said, we passed, as students walked by, we asked them if they want to have a copy of God's word. And uh, it's free. And uh, he said, let me have a copy of that. So he, he opened up the, he opened it up. I don't know what page he opened up, but he read it for about, I don't know, 10 seconds. 10 seconds is a long time when you're talking to a policeman. You know, there was two of them in there. He said, you know something? You continue what you're doing. They'll learn more in this book than, than they would in that school. Continue doing. And by the way, uh, can, can we have a can, can we have a couple? So we gave him a couple. He says, "No, I need a couple more. One for each one 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 of our wives." So wow. praise uh, uh, praise praise God for His glory. Amen. Why am I here? Well, because my dear friend uh, Pastor Paul, he tol he tolerates me. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know how, but you know. We pray for uh, your, we pray for Pastor Paul every single week. We pray for his ministry every single week. I pray for Pastor Paul. I'm going to start charging him. But I pray for Pastor <laughs> several times uh, several times a week, uh, faith, 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 faithfully. We covet we covet your prayers as well. This is not you know uh, in Matthew 24:14 in the Olivet Discourse, Jesus told the apostles, he says. So the, the gospel will be preached, and, and then the end will come. Um, what, what I want to tell you is that we covered your prayers. Uh, we, uh, we continue to pray for you. Um, when we, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if any one of you might think you might be qualified to become a Gideon, you know, 
you know, the, the Bible says uh, the, uh, the 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 work is plentiful, but the labor the the laborers are few. You know, there's uh, there's many churches, uh, and many areas of opportunity that we haven't even uh, been 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 been, uh, been in yet. So, if you'd like to have any additional information, any questions, I'll be around uh, after the service. You can ask me any question you want. And Pastor Paul, I don't know where he is. Pastor Paul, <laughs> thank you very much for your your invitation. Thank I appreciate you. it much. Thank you. Thank you. You know, just to add a couple of more lines, it's always fun to be with Joe. We always go for breakfast several times a year <laughs> in different restaurants too, sometimes cows and all the other places. Each time we, he has a different approach, which is excellent, you know. He asks the waitresses, uh, do you have any needs that we can pray for? And they usually tell, you know, not really, but pray for my something, you know, always. And then we pray, and then before we leave, he always hands out a New Testament to them. Mm -hmm. Each approach is different, and it works. It works. Yeah. Excellent. Praise the Lord. Those who probably, uh, you know, from, I have given test New Testaments here too, you know. When those who come here, we have a bunch of them, and we give it to them. But not in the, only one time I went with uh, Gideon's was at um, Bryan University, you know, where I taught at that time. And the chaplain was a problem. He said, I, this is not the Bible. This is only a New Testament. Bring the full Bible here. <laughs> and he chased everybody away. You know. I talked to him later on. And, Do we know God's word is eternal? So he ended up witnessing to him. And uh, later on, I still remember after I had left uh, Bryant, I went to the inter interfaith breakfast and so on. I ran into a teacher who always gave me a hard time when I was his student. Later I became a colleague next to him. And I ministered to him and told him about the power of God's word, like no other word on the earth. Then I gave him the Gideon's New Testament and he took it. I'm going to read it, Paul, definitely I'm going to read it. And it is working, you know, God's word. Sometimes it's easy because it's a treasure. I always considered the New Testament, it's a treasure. You can put it in your pocket. Lots of stories about Gideon's New Testament. You know. I still remember one incident in India. Uh, we ran out of uh, the particular New Testament to each group. You know, in the prison, one type, high school student, one type, college, and so on. So we were in a nursing college, and uh, we ran out of a nursing New Testament. And uh, long story short, I had another testament, and all the Gideons were looking at me, and uh, see, we were supposed to give only this type here, that type there, and that type. I told them, look, this is God's word. <laughs> I'll take the responsibility if the Lord punishes me. You know. So I gave another testament to the girl. You know, she was a Hindu girl. And she should have seen the cry in her eyes. And everybody got it. I didn't get it. And I said, no, we'll give something else for you. The same New Testament. It's a different color. Doesn't matter. She said, I don't like the, I don't mind the color. I want to read the word. That you explained that God is real and this word is real. Mm. You know, we never had another chance to go there. So chance comes but once. I composed the line at that time. You may not have another chance. Like the lady was talking about. She was considering suicide. Mm. Then she changed her mind. It's amazing, folks. All right. And uh, the best organization to join is the Gideon's organization. I am always for that. Number one. And it is working. And... Uh, I would like to encourage you, if you have a chance, to speak to Joe. That will be remarkable. Before we sing the next story, my next song, you know, I have already mentioned this about this incident about uh, how, whatever the talent God has given to you, know, you could always use that talent for God's glory. Whatever the talent for each one of us, 
you and I have, each person has a talent. And if we give it to God, God will bless it. And God will always use it for his glory. Because, like Joe said, it is God's love demonstrated in the Bible. God so loved the world. It is not that Jesus has love. Jesus is God. He is love. God is love. So when we pass on the New Testament or God's word, and uh, what happens? God works in mysterious ways. And this gentleman, his name was James Rowe. James Rowe. He came from England to this country a long time ago. And it, you know, this is about a century ago, 1890 he came from England. And uh, he was very gifted in art. Lots of people are uh, not gifted in art. Travis and I know some of the kids too, they are all gifted in drawings. I used to be very gifted when I was in the second grade. I used to draw an elephant and this and that. And I won praise too. Then later I gave it up to soccer and so on, no time and so on and so forth. This gentleman, he pursued the talent for a long time. And when he came here, he worked with his, uh, he worked in the railroad, he worked in Hudson River, Humane Society and everywhere else. And then he composed that song. That song was really forgotten. For, for a long, long time, people ignored it. Until Kenny Rogers, somebody by name B.J. Thomas, I never heard of him. Another gentleman by name Ray Stevens, you may have heard of him. They made use of the hymn. They made use of that hymn and they popularized it. God's people, for some reason, they didn't think of it. That's why he, he wrote the hymn based on God's love. Love lifted me. He wasn't talking about the filio, the brotherly love. He's talking about the agape love, God's love for his people. Who are the people? Agapatas, beloved. The Bible always addresses that. You know, John did that. Beloved. We are God's beloved. Because we have understood and accepted the love of God demonstrated on the cross as described in the word of God. Isn't that amazing? And now people sing that song everywhere because he used to write it for the Christmas cards and other cards. He was talented in his humorous writing and also spiritual. And then he composed this hymn for God's glory in a love lifted me. We are going to sing that. Travis is going to lead that song. And I think it's song number, hymn number 505. Five. Before we sing that, another thing I want to announce also is this. You know, I've been thinking, Lord, how is it that we don't have any baptism for a while? No one behold, you won't believe. Medina came to Christ recently and she has been wondering why is it that all these things are happening to me? Because I don't go to church, I don't go to the prayer meetings and so on. So the Thursday prayer meeting, after the meeting she told us, she gave her testimony there about the conviction that the Holy Spirit brings. And she said, Paul, I want to be baptized. I said, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Isn't that amazing? So we are going to baptize you. And if you have received Christ as Lord and Savior, and uh, you need to be baptized, you do not have to be baptized to be saved. You have to be baptized because you are saved. And that is the most important thing. A lot of people don't know that. Even here in Rhode Island, you know, the men uh, not the Mennonites, the... Uh, Mormons insist on that, believe in Christ, and uh, Christ in the sense is not God, but he is a God. The highest form of God you can go is uh, the lowest, among the highest. Christ is way down. You ought to be baptized so that you become a God also. You know? See, that's the false theory and so on. And um, they believe in that, but we believe God is Jesus is the Lord God Almighty, one with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
All right, we are going to sing that song and uh, we are going to baptize soon. Uh, keep here in prayer. Also, another thing, those who are baptized already can become a part of this church too, you know, as members. Did you know I was so glad and uh, astounded to hear Dr. Sylvester and Pansy, they're going to become members. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So it is the love of God that connects us with one another to be a part of God's kingdom, number one, to be a part of this family, number two, so that we could continue to work together as what? As a team. Mm. Praise the Lord. Love lifted me. Let's sing. <coughs> word can lift you up. That is demonstrated by the love of God. Uh, we are going to have a word of prayer and uh, after that I'll give you a short message. Joe has uh, most of it. Let's have a short word of prayer. Lord, we surrender to you, Lord. Your word is eternal, O oh God. When he spoke, it was done. You commanded and it stood still, O oh God. The psalmist said it so beautifully in the 33rd Psalm, O oh God. When you speak, it is done. Thank there is Lord. no question of that, O oh God. The most impregnable word, most powerful word, being the God of all power, your word also has that same power, O oh God. Let your word lift up your name because your love was demonstrated on the cross and you are our perpetual intercessory priest in heaven interceding for us oh god interceding for this service yes, 
interceding for the power of your word placed all over the world. Give it away through the Gideons, O oh God. Bless them, O oh Lord. Bless the spoken word, O oh God, the rhema, when it is preached, proclaimed. It has the power, O oh Lord, because when we speak your anointed word, Lord, signs and wonders will follow because you, O oh God, confirmed the anointed word with the signs following. Lord, we are going to see salvation, healing, and deliverance as we proclaim your word. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, God is sh uh, shaping the hearts of people. Did you know that? It is not in one day. A baby is born and it keeps on growing and growing. Being shaped, right? In the image that God has brought the baby for. In the same way, you and I are God's children. We are shaped in the image of God. Ever since Adam lost his shape as a child of God, his image was still there in a God's image in him. Until Christ is going to die and offer himself as a celestial high priest, salvation is not realized. God loved, God gave. God sought, and you and I are here, being bought by the blood of Jesus. So that is the way you and I are being shaped, fashioned, as it is said in Psalm 33. And we are fashioned like the way God, in our hearts, of all them who understand, and so on and so forth. So the Hebrew word for shaping is yat sher, yat sher. From the dwelling place from heaven. Where does God live today? He's everywhere, but his dwelling place right now is it's in heaven. What is he doing there from the dwelling place? He's looking down. Isn't that amazing? God is looking down. Why? So that you and I will look, look up. So one is looking down and one has to be looking up. But two connected, just like Peter and his eyes and the eyes of Jesus met. That convicted him. And then he went and wept bitterly because he, he, he denied, denied Jesus three times. And Jesus spoke to him, Rama, before the rooster crows, two times ago. You will have denied me how many times? Thrice, three times. Twice betrayal, twice denial, three times. The, the rooster crew. Just for the sake of Jonah, the rooster grew exactly where it was. You now we will have terrific chicken today, maybe. Probably Peter never had chicken. He didn't like rooster growing. Maybe he never wanted to hear it. Reminded him. Reminded him of what he had done. It is a reminder. So that's the way God fa fashions each one of us. He's looking down so that we would look up to him. Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where comes my help? So we look up. When we don't look up, what happened? We look around. You are depressed. You look within, you are oppressed. When you look up, you are blessed. Praise God for what God is doing through his people so that we can help people to look up. There is this actual story that Jesus was involved in. It is an incident. It's not a story. It is in the book of John, the gospel according to John, fourth chapter. You can see how a nobleman in an extra in an extremity, which means he has an extreme circumstance of his own child at the point of death. Have you ever been there? You will do everything to save your child. To save your child. And if it's an only child, you will do 
move every mountain to get that boy or a girl saved. A pastor, I still remember years ago, I went with one of my best friends to visit and he told me the story. All that I, I heard, earned in Ghana or Guyana, one of the two countries where he was, meant nothing when his little boy was dying. And the boy told him, Dad, don't worry. I'll be in heaven with Jesus, waiting for your arrival. That's the one thing that kept his, the couple alive. And he became a pastor. And I spoke in his church for three weeks in a row. That's the time I had that incurable disease. And the Lord healed me. You know, after three and a half years of struggle with that intestinal amoebiasis. I give God the glory for that. That's because of God's word. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 is a living word of God that has set me free from salvation, healing and deliverance to happen in reality. Let's read the Gospel of John 4th chapter where Jesus came from, he came here for the second time to Cana of Galilee where he transformed the water into wine. We saw that before. Look at this. And uh, let's read it from here. <clears throat> Let us read from 46, you know, Gospel of John, Gospel according to St. John, 4th chapter, 46. You know. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. You know. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard, when he heard that Jesus was, that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him, entreated him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Man's or woman's extremity is God's opportunity. You know? When, when, and Jesus said to him, unless you see, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. See his uh, emergency. Lord, help me. Before my ch child is going to die. He didn't know Jesus is the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. He didn't know that like he told Martha and Mary. Here, this is a different place, different gentleman, and a different need. The child is at the point of death. Jesus could even raise a child alive after the child dies. But here he, it's a different circumstance. The Lord knows exactly what to do and how to do and also how to fashion this family as he fashions individuals. Jesus said to him, go your way. Your son lives. He's not going to die. He didn't give, explain much. He, all that he said was go your way. In other words, go home. Your son lives. Most powerful words. Just coming from the mouth of Jesus, from the lips of the living Christ, telling him, go home. He didn't even say, don't worry about it. Not <laughs> like we say, right? Didn't say anything. Your son lives. Very important. The next one is much more important to me from our perspective. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. Wow. The word, the rhema, spoken word, spoken word, not even the written word he had. Jesus spoke to him. You know, in Psalm 33, it says he spoke and it was done at the same time. I remember in Brooklyn, I prayed with a waiter, with his son at the point of death in, in Italy. He had a hole in his heart. 
I prayed with him. He knelt down. Just I didn't even eat my spaghetti and meatball there. He knelt down right there. He was a waiter and he prayed with me. And at the same time, the Lord healed him, his son in Italy. That's the first time I prayed people in proxy. Later on, I did to another lady. Her son was another place in a coma. And the Lord healed her at the same time. Praise the Lord. So the Lord, God's word has some power in it. He don't see it. Because we want to see it instantly. But the Lord is fashioning it. Changing the lives of people. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went his way. He didn't drive Jesus to his home. He believed the word. His word is as powerful as his being there in person. That's the message for me today. When we take God at his word, the most powerful God and his word. Like Joe said, his word will return to him. How? With the no void. It is going to accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent. Just like snow from heaven and rain from heaven is to water the earth. That's the way the same power of his word. And now as he was going down, it's quite a bit of distance, walking distance, not quite close, long distance. As he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, your son lives. Jesus said, your child lives. Your son lives. Go your way, your son lives. And now they are saying, your son lives. See the first word? Your son lives. This is a confirmation, although the father didn't even see the son alive, the child alive. Praise the Lord. And what happens? So the father knew. You know, then he inquired them of the hour when he got better. What time did he get better? Curiosity. What time? What was he thinking? He was connecting the time that Jesus spoke. And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. The exact time when the Lord Jesus spoke to him. The seventh hour yesterday. What about the yesterday? No. Now this is the next day. He's actually visibly hearing about the miracle. Not about seeing the child alive. See how when you believe, you don't have to see. With the eyes of faith, you watch how the Lord is going to accomplish it in his time for his glory. When we ask the Lord in faith, it is done. That's the way we have to believe. Just like Peter, Lord, didn't he curse the, red, uh, the fig tree yesterday? Look at this now. And what happened to the tree? It was rooted out, fell down, fallen. When did the tree fall? Not immediately. After everybody had left. But in the mind of Jesus, when he spoke, and the tree fell down. The root was cut out. In the healing, it is always the same thing. When God heals, he already healed us on the cross. The doctors treat the symptoms. Dr. Sylvester will tell you. you thank God for the doctors like Dr. Sylvester. Accurate diagnosis, effective medicine. God heals in so many ways. Praise God. Now, this one, when he went there, he was on the way. He was able to get this message that my son is better. Son lives. He could have died. That's what the dad got expected. He didn't expect bad news. People always say, you know, pastor prayed for me. All these people pray for, pray, are praying for me. But my child is becoming bad from bad to worse. That's the way they will say sometimes. Because we want to see instantly what has happened. Like the gentleman I prayed for with an elephantitis, each leg was huge like this. I opened my eyes. 
after prayer, believing that it would go away, it didn't happen. And uh, thank God for the Hindu wife who had surrendered her life to Christ, told me the next day, I, refused, I didn't want to go there the next day for prayer because I thought God didn't answer my prayer. I'm not going to say Jesus heals. I was really, Lord, you blew up. You blew it. I prayed in your name, nothing happened. Has it ever happened to you? How many times did it happen sometimes? Sometimes it happens, you know, you pray and nothing happens. You don't see the results that you are expecting to see. But God is fashioning your faith, you and the people too. So that's the night I was awakened by the Spirit of God to look up for that passage where Jesus cursed the fig tree. Then I understood after reading it. So I lit our kerosene lamp. We didn't have electricity at that time. I said, Lord, what about this? Look, I cursed the tree and the tree died. Well, at the moment he spoke, like the psalmist said, he spoke and it was done. Yeah. Amen. That's the way we have to believe it. Amen. Can you see with that mustard seed faith, purest little faith, like that, the size of a mustard seed, without any doubt? Can you believe that? The Lord is going to take care of it. The symptoms are still there, but the root is cut out. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to say it to these Hindu people. I anointed with oil and all that, but nothing happened. So when I went and prayed, I told the lady, you know, the leg was the same size. How could you pray over somebody with the same leg with the same thing? That is where I learned Lord, I thank you. Your name is exalted. Thank you, Lord. You are the miracle healer. I exalt your name over this gentleman as the mightiest healer. And thank you, Lord. It is done. I praise your name. Give me the oil again. And I applied it again. And I began to thank you and praise him. We were reading Psalm, I believe, 57 and let, the, you know, let God's name be exalted far above all the earth. Be thou exalted, O God, far above heavens. Like John saw him, all the prophets saw God and highly exalted. El Olam, God of eternity, everlasting God. And God was telling Abraham the same thing. You know? Hey, look, I am El Olam. I am the everlasting God. Look at it with his word, it's an everlasting word. God is love, you see that on Jesus. If you believe in him, what happens? You will never perish. And you have everlasting life. And that's the way God operates. You know. So what happens? He went home. You know. Then he inquired of them, the hour. How is better? And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household. This is what God's objective was, performing, performing this miracle to shape his faith in him more so that he could witness to the people also in the household. It is not one person, you know, the whole household. I have seen many, many times, many, many families have come to Christ. And it is real, folks. They see one little simple answer to prayer, the sign from the helicopter. <laughs> you didn't see the helicopter, it was far off. But he wanted to see a sign, here was a little New Testament in a package, package thing. He opened it and came to Christ. Isn't that amazing? Our God is able to do that. Where it is applicable, God has a way, but every miracle is different. But we have to believe the word, not the person who prays, not anyone else. We are just vessels. Blessed be the name. So he believed and his whole household. This is again the second miracle 
that the Lord Jesus performed when he came in. Now the man is able to look up. He looked up yesterday at the seventh hour. He looked to Jesus at his face. Now the whole family is looking up to heaven. The Lord God of heaven. Isn't that amazing? That is what God was fashioning his heart and his household to be ready for the whole gang to come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. The whole clan, the whole family, who knows how many other people in that village. And he was an influential family man, noble man. So when, you, when God is looking down, God looks down, you look up and your eyes meet and praise the Lord. So family, including servants and everybody, look up because God is looking down for you. So people have to read God's word, the written word. Gideon's New Testament, Gideon's Bible, placed everywhere. And you can be a great witness. Rhema, spoken word. Like Joe said, Jesus loves you. That is why I am doing it. Nobody's paying for me to do that. That's why I never use my title pastor, because they think I'm paid for the job. I told them, no, no, I have always been doing it. Like that Hindu lady said in, in India, oh, you, you, your whole life changed after you met your wife. No, no, my, my life changed after I met Jesus, and Jesus changed me. Oh, then I will take Jesus as my Lord and Savior. My wife and I prayed with her right in that place, and you know, I praise the Lord. We always think of her and keep her and pray. So, Rhema is the spoken word. Logos is the written word. John used it so powerfully. In the beginning was the word, Logos, and the word was with God, and the word was God. God, one in three and three in one. Same substance, not what anyone else says, whether it's Jehovah Witness or the Mormon or anybody else. And that is what is a reality. And if they know the truth, the truth will set you free. So you become a witness. How do you know? I know it. I have experienced the love of God. So hearing and believing, one thing. That's why we go to plant to the seed. Place the Bibles. Reading and believing. That's also another miracle. Logos. It was Logos, the word. It was glory for the Romans. For the Greek, it was wisdom. For the Jews, it was power. And that Logos has all the three in it. So God's word becomes all that it has to be. You know, from the heart to the mind and then to the lips. That's the way it works. Praise the Lord. God's word is going to accomplish everything it has to happen. With this word, I would like to close down Psalm 57, 11, you know. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. One more script. Scripture with a critical analysis is this. You know, God will not do anything against his word. I may have mentioned it a few times. One more time. God will not do anything against his word. Only for his word. Why? He confirms the word. His word, when we place it and share it, he confirms God's word. He, Jesus does it. The Holy Ghost gives us the energy and we do placing or proclaiming either way. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus confirms it. How? With the signs and wonders. Also, the most important thing is for eternity, you know, God is the same. His word is the same. You know, and they are eternally fixed. You can go and look up for that scripture later on in Psalm 119, 89. Forever, O God, forever, O God, thy word is fixed, settled in heaven. Wow, what a word. Years ago, I came to understand that. What does it mean? It is settled in heaven. It is fixed in heaven. Amen. Immovable. Amen. 
settled once and for all. So it describes the firmness, establishment, fixedness, however way you put it. And uh, uh, the, I went to the, into the, uh, what is that uh, Hebrew word for it? Not sob, not sob. The root word of it, root meaning. Firmly footed. They always used to say, you know, where you know, the, Jesus gave all the stories. The story of the house that is built upon the rock. When the wind came and the storm blew and all that, but the, the house built on the rock, what did it do? It stayed. But the house that built on the sand, what happened to it? It was blown away. Blown away. Just like the homes in Turkey and the Syria, however sad it is, they try to build homes that can withstand earthquake. From a spiritual perspective, God's kingdom is the greatest house. We are partakers of his benefit, benefit like Brother Edwin said, when we separate ourselves from the world and join the Lord God Jesus, the light of the world, what happens? We are separated people, right? Ecclesia, separated people, the church, separated for good works so that we can give away all that God has called us to do. So God's word is settled in heaven, established in your heart, in your lips. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. All those who would listen to this message and the program today, oh Lord, it is your presence, oh God, not any program or method, oh God. It is your word. Your word is established in heaven, O oh God. You speak and it is done. Let those who listen, O oh God, take your word in their hearts. And Lord, let it perform for what purpose you have sent it to save, to heal, and deliver. If you have never known Christ as Lord and Savior, open your heart and receive him. Because he paid the greatest praise on the cross. Yes. That's what the Bible tells us. No one could pay, pay, pay that price except Christ. That's why he is the only savior and there is no other name given under heaven whereby we can be saved. It is the grace of God. He offered himself. That is the price he paid. He offers you the salvation by his grace free of cost. It costs you nothing. Just open your heart and thank him and receive him. And if you have any healing issues, if you are sick or suffering, give that to Jesus. Place it at his feet. May his Holy Spirit connect you to save, to be healed, to be saved, healed and delivered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing the last saying. Glory to his name. 527. 527.
working in Rhode Island and all over the world. They are proclaiming you cannot be complete. You got to do all the works to become a completed individual to be accepted in heaven if you make it. But with Christ, it's the opposite. Like the last line talks about it. What happens when you plunge at his feet? You are made what? Complete. complete. Yes. Say it, completed in Christ. Complete. I am complete. Yes. I am complete by the blood of Jesus. Let's sing that one more time then. Number four. Complete is the Confirm the word that is spoken right from the beginning today here, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Through the singing, through the testimonies, the spoken word, and the red word. Lord, everything, oh God, it's in your hands. We thank you and glorify your name. The most high God, the most highly exalted. Oh Lord, El Olam, everlasting God. Yes, Lord. Thank Lord, we you, thank you for your everlasting life that you purchased and made us complete in the beloved, O oh God. You are accepted in the beloved and made complete in the beloved. We thank you, Lord. We ask, ask for your special blessing upon Brother Edwin Sarfras, O oh God, on his birthday tomorrow. Let him enjoy this happy birthday with your renewed strength and renewed health, O oh God. And bless their wedding anniversary today, O oh God. Bless them. Lord Edwin and Salome, O oh God, yes. as they enjoy this day together, you brought them together and you've given them the wonderful children, O oh God. Yes. They are your family and they are our family, O oh God. Yes. We are all under your family, Lord. Yes. You take care of us and everyone in our families. Yes. Everyone, O oh God. Those who are with us are not today, but they are going to be with us, O oh God. And ultimately, we are going to be with you forever and ever. As one family, the family of God, we do thank you as we offer ourselves today. Yes, Lord. And the offering, Lord, at the plate, we pray that you will bless every giver today and the gathering downstairs. Let your peace and your power and your presence go with us in Jesus' miracle name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go downstairs. Lent service. One more thing. Please forgive me. One more thing, Lent service, Lenten service as I call it, starts here on 22nd, you know, there is a change because the church of the master where it is supposed to be held, they are not going to host it on the 22nd, I don't know what the problem was, so Reverend Falu requested me to host that service right here at Mount Pleasant, alright, so we, we don't have any problem, thank God for uh, God sent uh, Aurora agreed to play the music that day. So we are all set. Blessed be the name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.